<laughs> hey man, looks good. Uh, hey, I'm just curious, how much are you looking forward to tomorrow and uh, the opportunity to perform in front of these scouts? You know, it, it's a great opportunity, and uh, you know, I'm really excited for it. Uh, you know, it's obviously something I've been training for for two and a half, three months now, and so you know, just going up and you know, showcasing what I've been, what I'm able to do, and you know, showing how I can improve an NFL team is something that you know I'm really looking forward to, and uh, really just looking forward to showcasing what I got. Uh, Parker Gabriel, Journal Star. Like, just over the course of time, did you ever have? expectations for what this period in your career would look like, what it would be like day to day. And obviously it's a strange year all around, but how, how has it matched or not matched your expectations the past couple of months? Yep. You know, uh, you know, I never really had too much expectations going into it. Uh, you know, I've always tried to put as much focus onto the next phase of my life as possible. And, you know, that next phase really didn't happen until, you know, December, 2020. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of draft shows, stuff like that, that you watch and, you know, you kind of think that's how it's going to be. And obviously with COVID, you know, the only difference is, you know, sometimes you're working out with a mask on and, uh, you know, that's something, you know, I think, I think we're all looking forward to taking stuff like that off. But uh, other, other than that, you know, every, everything was, you know, kind of how I expected it to be, you know, going in, working out all day, uh, getting really tight with the guys you were with. And, uh, you know, the camaraderie there was awesome. And, you know, just going out, getting better day by day and, you know, watching not only yourself, but everyone around you get better and push each other is uh, something that was really exciting and, you know, something that I love personally. And, you know, I'll, I'll cherish these couple months and, you know, just looking forward to, you know, actually, you know, training for football here again. This might seem like sort of a obvious question, but when you're going through and, and, you know, talking with NFL teams, are you doing that on Zoom? Is it on the phone? Have you done, have you been able to meet with anybody in person? Like what, what does that communication look like? Yeah, so uh, I actually went to the Tropical Bowl, and they had an actual physical game down there. So I was able to get in front of a lot of scouts, meet with them person to person, face to face. And everything other than that has been a lot of Zoom calls, um, you know, a lot of other, you know, weird versions of Zoom I've, I've been on. And, you know, I didn't know there were so many out there. But uh, there's been a, been a lot of stuff like that, some phone calls. But, you know, it's really been all over the board and, uh, you know, just – you know, in the, in the age of COVID, you know, you find out there's a lot more technology than you thought was out there. Brian Christofferson. Hey, Jack, uh, was, it, was it a tough call um, deciding if you could, you know, use your, I guess, repeat of a senior season that was available? Or was that something where you're like, I've, I've spent my time in the program, it's time to see what's next? You know, absolutely. Uh, you know, that was, that was a question that you know I was asking myself you know obviously towards the tail end there and uh you know it it, it was something that you know I obviously talked to my family about a lot uh you know talked to my loved ones and you know I, at the end of the day uh you know I felt that you know I, I'm the best football player I have been and you know I felt like I was ready, ready for that next challenge ready for that next step and you know ready to step out of the comfort zone that was Nebraska football for me and really take my game to the next level so that was a lot of things that went into my thought process. And, you know, I, I feel, you know, my game, like I said, is the best it's ever been. And, you know, I just felt like I was ready to take that next step. And, you know, I, I just felt like, you know, I was ready. Guys don't like to say how hurt they are during the season sometimes, but I know you, you took a big, that was a tough injury right off the bat. How, how, how much pain were you playing with throughout 2020? Uh, you know, obviously, anytime you have an injury like that, it uh, you feel it a little bit. But you know, it's something you know I'm able, I was able to tough through. You know, I take pride in. You know, I was told it was going to be a four week recovery, and you know, I ended up only missing one game for it. And you know, playing with pain, that's just football. So you know, I, I just got used to it. And uh, you know, as the weeks went on, you know, I barely even thought about my knee. And you know, it just became you know another another thing that. You know, I, I wore a brace and I never thought about anything other than the brace. And, you know, the worst thing I ever felt was the brace rubbing up against my skin. So, uh, you know, it was it, it really didn't hurt too bad. And, you know, I was just, you know, getting out there and, you know, showing everyone how healthy I am. And, you know, the knee feels perfectly fine now. And, you know, to be honest, better than it ever has been. Thanks, Jack. No problem. Lincoln Journal star Steve Sipple. Hey, Jack, going back to when you were um 
picking schools to attend, picking colleges to attend. How important was that school and its ability to get you ready for this moment? And do you feel like Nebraska did a good job of that? Absolutely. You know, uh, a, bi a big reason why I did come to Nebraska was uh, initially the pro-style system and, you know, under, under Coach Riley and Coach Langsdorf. And, you know, obviously I've thrown a curveball two years later when, you know, Coach Frost comes in and it's a whole different offense. And, you know, initially, you know, I, I didn't know what to think of it. But, uh, you know, I, to me, I'm, I'm extremely grateful because I do feel like both offenses and both coaching systems got me ready for the next level. It showed my versatility and, uh, you know, under Coach Riley's staff, you know, I'm blocking a lot more in line. You know, it's a pro style system. And then, you know, coming to Coach Frost, I'm able to spread out a little more, you know, block more on the perimeter, you know, run some routes from the slot and, uh, you know, really just expand my game. And it really forced me to become a lot better of a football player and more versatile. So, you know, I'm really grateful for both staffs. And I think, you know, just the unique combination of the two really did help prepare me for the next level. Jack, one other thing. Um, what do you miss most about the training table at this point? You know, it's a lot, lot easier going in there and, uh, you know, just making a plate for yourself instead of, you know, going over there and grilling chicken every day on Sunday and doing stuff like that. So really just the convenience, uh, you know, the training table was something, you know, Dave Ellis did a great job of, you know, making sure food was always ready for us, always available. And so, you know, just the strict convenience was, you know, something that, you know, you got to get used to when you, when you don't have it there. And, you know, it's something that, you know, as soon as you don't have it, you really learn to appreciate it even more. Thank you, Jack. No problem. Uh, Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Hey, Jack, uh, if you can kind of turn back the clock uh, one year ago to, to the pro day in 2020, it was right at, the, at the, the very beginning of a lot of changes that you as football players had to, uh, had to work around. Um, you know, how much from, from then until now um, ha has your, your viewpoint on like what you take for granted in this entire process changed? Uh... Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think COVID just in general has really made people appreciate a lot more of what they do have, you know, coming in and being able to work out of something, you know, before COVID, I'm sure we all took for granted. You know, we thought the weight room would always just be open. We thought spring ball would always be available. And, you know, I think it really just kind of changed specifically my perspective in realizing I get to go out and do what I love every single day and have cleats on my feet. So, you know, it's something that, you know, I really, you know, try to, you know, really consciously realize that, hey, this is really truly a blessing that everyone talks about. And, you know, not every, not, you don't know if the weight rooms are going to be closed down, you know, because of some pandemic or any other factors like that. So, you know, it's something that's really kind of opened my eyes, made me really appreciate, you know, coming into work and, you know, I had a smile coming in every day before it, you know, it, I got an even bigger one now. So, uh, you know, it's just something that really taught me to appreciate being able to work out and play football. Hey, can you also speak on a different subject just about, um, you know, the, the guys that you left behind, the guys who were coming back on the offensive side? Um, you know, there's a pretty stark contrast between offense and defense as far as um, the experience level. Um, you know, some may see that as a, uh, a difficulty, a di you know, a, a, something that needs to be overcome for those guys on the offensive side. You know, how, how do you view that? And, um, you know, in, in just the uh, momentum that is returning on, the, on your side of the ball in Lincoln. Absolutely. You know, I, I think that those guys who, you know, were a little bit of the twos and who will be, will be replacing the guys that are leaving, you know, I got all the confidence in the world in them. You know, I've seen them go in the weight room. I've seen them work. And, you know, I got the utmost confidence in the world. They, they do everything that they are asked, asked of and more. And so, you know, they just got to trust the process. And, you know, I know a lot of guys are doing that. And so, you know, I got all the faith in the world in them. And, you know, I'm just excited to see what they can do. This is their opportunity to go out there and show what they have. So I'm pumped for them. And, you know, I'm hoping that they go make the most of it. And I know a lot of them will. And, you know, the spring ball coming up here on Monday for them will be the first time they can do that. So, uh, you know, just my advice to them is just go out there and make the most of it. And like, like, I, like you said with the other question, you know, you just got to appreciate it every day, come into work, because you never know when it could be your last practice. Up tomorrow. 
take uh, one more for uh, Jack uh, from Evan Bland from the World Herald. Hey, Jack, kind of in that same vein, uh, what do you make of the tight end room coming back this next year? And who are some guys that uh, in that room that you're excited to see what they can do here this fall? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, again, I, you know, unfortunately, I haven't been around him as much. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited to see, you know, Austin Allen and Travis Vokluck and, you know, Kurt Raftel. I think that those are guys who have been in the system. They've been working. They've they've put in the work. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just extremely excited to see what they can do. You know, Austin someone that can do it all. And I'm, I'm really pumped for him. Travis is just going to be a hard-nosed football player like he always has been. And, you know, just seeing him evolve from, you know, the technique he had coming in here to what he has now, just seeing him evolve has been awesome. And, you know, he's been taking steps, you know, every every step of the way, really. And, you know, I think Kurt Raftel is someone, you know, I, a lot of people are sleeping on. I think, you know, he might be the most technically sound one in the room as far as route running, footwork, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I've, I've seen him make great strides in the weight room. So, you know, those guys have been putting in the work, and those are the guys I'm really excited to see. And, uh, you know, they, they, they've been going out there attacking it. And, you know, I, I think that on the field it will show.